Today on Ballistic Barbecue, I'm going to be cooking beef back ribs on the Sunterra Pro Series Ironworks Santa Maria Grill. Let's get going. So we're going to be doing a very special cook. It's going to be kind of grill smoking, I guess. We're using, again, the Santa Maria, but I'm also using the Versalit on top, which is going to help kind of trap some of that smoke. And uh, it's going to change the whole dynamic of the cook. Very excited about that. And I'm also going to be making you guys a really good sauce that goes great. It's more of a glaze. It goes great with beef. And it's going to knock your socks off when we get to that. Here's the beef ribs. So as you can see, they're back ribs and they are individually cut. And this is why. I've always told people that, you know, ask about beef ribs, you know, especially the back ribs. The best time to buy beef back ribs on the rack are after the holidays, like after Christmas. Um, the prime rib roasts that don't sell, they usually you know, cut off the racks and put those up for sale, stake out the roast itself. These are what's left over from Valentine's Day. So you, you, I, I go into my grocery store actually on Valentine's Day and I notice in the meat market they had you know, the ribeye steaks, boneless ribeye steaks, butterfly open and it looks like a heart. So then I wander back to where the packaged meats are and lo and behold, tray after tray after tray of individually cut beef ribs. So I bought like 11 ribs. It was a really good price. I couldn't resist. Now the membrane is still on these and normally on back ribs, on beef back ribs, I will peel the membrane off, but That'd be a hassle. I'm not going to bother with it. It'll be fine. First thing I'm going to do is season these very basically with just some kosher salt and black pepper. So even though there is the membrane on there, I'm still just going to hit the back with a little bit of salt and pepper. I'm really not going to worry about seasoning the sides of these. The, the glaze is going to be plenty of flavor and the salt and pepper that I do have on here will be just fine. Okay, this is looking good. I got the Santa Maria all fired up. I'll meet you guys at the grill. So we're burning almond today with just a little bit of oak in there. We had a bunch of rain over the last couple days and a lot of my wood got very wet. So I'm going what I had that was dry, which is like I said, some almond and just a little bit of my oak. I wanted to use all oak on this cook, but it is what it is. It's still going to be good. Almond's a great wood for, for smoking, especially beef. Nice. I was a little concerned, but it looks like I probably could have fit another rib or two right in the front. So nice. So the first part of this cook is more or less low and slow. I have the grate raised up above to where it's not getting a whole bunch of like searing heat. It's going to want to kind of trap that heat in there, trap the smoke, more like a smoker or a wood fired oven. And I'm cooking this until they're tender. So I'm not shooting for any target temperature or anything. While these ribs cook, Let's make that sauce. All right, this glaze is probably seems a little bit unconventional. Came out of this noggin after all, but trust me, it, it is really, really good. I'm going to kick it off with some ketchup, some French dip beef au jus concentrate. This is Johnny's au jus concentrate, and this stuff is, is really, really good. Some English style hot mustard, Coleman's. My favorite. Little apple cider vinegar. Some dried mustard seed. Red pepper flakes. Now here's where the eyebrows raise. This is fig preserves. And fig and beef go hand in hand. And one of my all time favorite burger videos I ever did had a kind of a concoction I made with bacon and fig. And it was really, I mean, just amazing. OK, 
and now I'm going to get the heat on here. Start stirring. The next ingredient is going to be brandy. And if you're making this glaze, all that I ask is that if the pan's hot, just make sure that you're not adding this early in the recipe. Wait till the end because <laughs> you don't want to flambe your face. So go ahead and add that brandy in there, get it stirred up. Now all there is to do is bring this up to a boil. Once it's boiling, I'm going to reduce it to a simmer and allow it to thicken. Easy stuff. Uh, the whole mustard seed, if anybody's concerned, those will become very, very soft by the time this, this glaze is finished. But this is amazing. And you'll see it again once it's done. So this is your official ribs have been on for an hour update. This lid off. Ribs are getting some gorgeous color. I mean, they almost look like they're being cooked in an offset the way they look right now. Get the lid back on. This cook's been going really, really good. The ribs smell amazing, and I think we can all agree they look really good. What I've been doing for peace of mind is taking an instant read thermometer, and I've been holding it in here just every now and then to check the internal temperature of the cooker here. And I'm not touching the meat, I'm not touching the lid, and it's been averaging about 205 degrees Fahrenheit. So that's pretty low temperature cook. Perfect for getting that smoke on there though. Perfect for a nice tender end result. But eventually I will be pumping up the heat a little bit by lowering the grates. And then of course we're going to hit the ribs with that glaze and I wanna set the glaze. So once they get closer to done, we'll move on to those next steps. We are at the two hour mark now. I'm gonna pull these ribs, we're gonna glaze them. And again, just look at the colors on these guys. Wow. These are really beautiful, very juicy. And here's that glaze all reduced. Making sure I wanna get the edges with this glaze. All right, let's get back on the grill. I'm going to go ahead and just lower this down a little bit. Now I'm just allowing that glaze to set. It shouldn't be much more than 15 or 20 minutes. And I would say these are some pretty nice looking beef ribs, Greg. <laughs> so I'm gonna pull these ribs, we'll let them rest a little bit, give you guys a try. And here they are all rested and just look at that color. These are, I mean, they're beautiful, beautiful. Let's try one of these out. <laughs> uh, I pretty much crushed this. Let me grab a knife and I want to show you the, the smoke ring. Just to get cross cut on this rib here. There, nice. You see that smoke ring there? And you can see it's just so like nice and juicy. Fantastic cook. Smoke flavors coming in. The glaze is, it's just such a great glaze for beef. Getting a little bit of sweetness, a lot of savoriness and a teeny bit of heat. I mean, it's just, very well balanced. Very, if you were going to omit anything, it would be the red chili flakes, unless you, it, it definitely adds some heat. If you're not into the heat, either cut or eliminate that. But everything else definitely needs to be in this, in this recipe here. Good stuff. Anyway guys, thanks for stopping by. If you're not subscribed, please hit the sub button. Make sure you ring the bell, thumb it up if you like it. And the biggest way to help any 
of the creators you follow on YouTube is to share the video. So please share this one. I'll see you on the next recipe. Cheers.